Now, we only have one more day and we're gonna get into how bacteria, how, how they actually infect you and ways they can do this. But it, it's so important what makes them so, uh, sur have a high survivability and how they can adapt so quickly is that they can reproduce like no other. Okay? They can reproduce like no other. If you remember from yesterday, if I had one bacteria and it went to two, how long did it take? 9.8 9. minutes. minutes. Now, to be tricky, if you had two bacteria and the time it takes them to go to four, how long is that? 9. 18. Now, see, people would say 18, but it's actually 9.8. Okay, so keep that in mind. Now, there's two ways they reproduce. Okay, two ways they reproduce. One is called binary fission. Okay, now you got to look at the name, and instead of just like, oh, I don't know what that is, I don't understand that, break the word apart, right? Fission means to split. Okay, right down the middle, fission. So there's a nuclear fission, you split atoms, okay? Same thing, you're splitting, okay? And then binary, binary means number, bi means two. So it's, uh, you're splitting into two. So bacteria start out as one, look at that, and they split into two. So that's your binary fission. And there, there are some other things, and I'm gonna show you here in just a second. I'm not sure if they actually go through binary fission, but they split in very much the same way as this. Now, what you need to know about binary fission, well, we know it's fast, right? But there's absolutely no physical contact with another bacteria, none. So this would be what would be considered asexual reproduction or uh, without sex, reproduction without sex, because there's no actual physical contact. Now, <clears throat> I'm gonna explode this finger up again. Now, when I started teaching back in 94, there was a new kind of infection going around. This is it. And remember I told you when uh, we were talking about the shapes that the, probably the, the worst infection to get would be a staphylococcus. Uh, this is a staph infection. And you can see, uh, I think now we can kind of treat this, but back in 94, we didn't know quite how to treat it because it was antibiotic resistant to a lot of things. And so the person here, whether this is a guy or a girl, they had a, like maybe a scratch here and they got that uh, bacteria in there and it just starts eating the flesh. And it happens so quickly, so quickly. Now, why I, I mentioned it, it's always gonna be in my mind because that was a big thing when I was teaching, when I started teaching. Uh, the story that sticks in my mind because it's humorous slash not humorous. Um, and I actually have the article from there. Uh, a truck driver, who lives in Florida where it gets really warm, right? He had a pimple on his backside. And you know how sometimes you, you kind of like scratch? Evidently he scratched and broke it open and had a little of the bacteria on his, on his finger. And by the time he got home later that night, he went from being normal to having 105 and having to go to the emergency room. He was super sick. Didn't kill him, uh, but he lost some of his butt cheek. <laughs> Can you imagine sitting on your backside the whole day and thinking, whoa, there's something going on here. And then you get home, you're like, 10 o'clock at night, you're like, honey, take me to the hospital. And then they find this, okay? And you can see that is bad. Now, people have had this on their face. Uh, if you don't get it treated, it will kill you. It will kill you. And so that's one part of it. Now, remember I told you about uh, the Black Death, bubonic plague? And I said, people, and that's not to be gross, even though I like being gross like this, but people would smell their own rotting flesh and they call it black death for a reason because they would have patches like this form where the bacteria um, would poison them so much that this patch of skin would die. Now you can, you can see they kind of got like a, a plastic film over it. Okay? And then they've got it draining. So uh, they stopped the loss, I doubt very, you can easily see that it looks like it's actually shrinking here. So they might've saved that. And it's all because these bacteria, man, they go quick. They can divide so quickly. So here's the, kind of that same thing we were just talking about. You start with one and at seven hours, if you do the math, you got 2 million. So if that guy actually, you know, scratched his behind and didn't check it, say like at six in the morning and didn't check it till you know, like 10 o'clock, well, you can see 2 million, you're, you might start getting an, an effect. Remember, we're huge and they, 
just one or two is not really going to affect us. But when you start getting the numbers, you know, that guy probably spent the whole day driving. The bacteria were in the lag phase, right? Like what's going on back here? You got your bacteria's in lag phase. You could go back and look. There's probably nothing there. But there comes a point where they go logistic and they go skyrocketing. And uh, about 10 o'clock, that guy, it went skyrocketing. And so you know it's every, every 9.8 minutes, it doubles. It doubles. It doubles. So if I say they start with 3 and they go to 6, it's still 9.8. Okay? And so you can see what's happening. And it just keeps going. It's uh, where they logistic. Very logistic. Okay? Now, for you athletes, and even if you're not an athlete, you, you get kind of curious. Remember the blue things of the mitochondria, powerhouse of the cell? Mrs. Hall did a good job teaching you guys that. Check out that mitochondria. Look, what is it doing? Dividing. It's dividing. Okay, and that's one of the reasons we think that probably they, they, they were bacteria at one time and became symbiotic with our cells, but you can see this one is splitting. Now, I don't know if it's binary vision, I mean, it looks like it to me, but I wouldn't be able to, I wouldn't know exactly. So it, like, I'm a cross country coach. And so uh, even if I were a soccer coach or a basketball coach or a football, any, any sport you gotta run, I would want you to have these. Cause that more you have, the more energy you have. So like in cross country, we'll start out at one mile a day. One mile a day, doesn't matter how fast you go, just nice and easy one mile a day. Your body's gonna start to respond. As soon as you start, Using that energy from your muscles, they'll start dividing. You might end up with, say, and I'm just gonna throw out a number, you might start out with 256 per muscle cell. But you might end up with like 3,000 in a muscle cell. And that, that will allow you to run further, harder, faster, without running out of energy, okay? Kind of a cool fact. But they don't divide nearly, I don't think, as rapidly as a bacteria, okay? Here's the other way bacteria divide. Now this is the sexual form of bacteria, which means the bacteria actually have to touch. Okay? Bacteria sex, they actually have to touch. You know, it's it's not the same thing as like if you see cats, dogs, whatever. They just touch. They just gotta be within touching distance. <clears throat> and we're gonna be dissecting earthworms here pretty soon. And earthworms are hermaphroditic. They have both, they have both sets of reproductive organs. If you've ever hunted night crawlers at night to go fish, you ever see two that are connected head to head like this? One's forward, one's like that. That's when they're mating. And that's like when you're in the money, you can grab and you get two for one deal there. Okay. So certain bacteria are hermaphroditic. So they're both male, female, very efficient. The way animals reproduce, not very efficient, but bacteria and earthworms, super efficient. Okay. And so this is sexual reproduction versus asexual reproduction. Sexual reproduction. So these, this is where they actually have to touch and trade DNA. And it's called conjugation. Okay. Very physical. Bacteria need to touch. Can I move it up? Yeah. I suppose you guys will tell me if it's... Okay. And then here's an actual picture. They colored it so you could actually see where one bacteria is actually touching another and trading DNA. So there's your physical, 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 physical form right here. Now this bacteria, you can see it's got, remember these are pili, just like a bacteria's hands. So the bacteria wants to touch, it's got to get these out. But it also has one that's called a sex pilus, okay? And it reaches out and touches. And if I were to say, hey, you know, how do you know which one's touching whom? I'm going to show you the way because this is a little, little more advanced, but you guys could take it. To me, the first thing it would notice is this. See how they looks just different than this one? But the sure sign, if they have it labeled, this is an F plus cell. I can't remember what the F means. And then you have the X negative. It always goes positive to negative. And so that's trading. Take that home and you know, when you're sitting at dinner tonight with mom, dad, grandma, grandpa, draw that out for them. They might get a kick out of that, especially grandma. Grandmas are always good for that. All right, questions so far? All right, now, 
if Mr. Dobson wanted to get inoculated or vaccinated for anthrax. Have you guys ever heard of anthrax? Mm. It's a rod-shaped bacteria. Um, deadly if you breathe it in. Can be deadly if you breathe it in, especially the, the, the biological weapon type. If you get it on your skin or in your skin, it breaks through your skin. Not so deadly. But why I mention that is because when conditions aren't right, remember they're survivors, bacteria are survivors. So when anthrax, which you're gonna find in like cattle lots, back in the early days, if you got it, people usually survived it. But if a, if a bacteria is at a point where it's not having any food or it's getting too hot, too cold, uh, no water, maybe the sun is too strong, it will, instead of just dying, it will turn into a, a hard endospore. And it's extremely tough. So think about a rod-shaped bacteria, and when it, it gets stressed out, it goes into this form right here. So I want you to think of, um, like, I'm trying to think of a, a nut that would be really hard, like an almond. It would be really tough. You just can't take fire and burn an almond right away. It takes a lot. And so these things are so tough that they can survive fire. They can survive a bleaching. And uh, you guys, about the time you were being born, somebody was sending the United, a congressman an envelope loaded with endospores. You guys ever heard of that? Yeah, the anthrax attacks. The anthrax attacks. And so the, they were hoping that it would make it to the senator. I'm not sure if it ever made it to the senator. But I know several people died that intercept the mail and they open it, and then these spores would come out. Well, you can't see them, they're so small, and they were breathing them in. And then once they, you know, they got them in the lungs, it was done. It was done. They had to clean mail facilities uh, at the House of Representatives, the, the Senate building. They had to do all that. It was terrible. And so uh, it got everybody's mind thinking. And then there's like, oh, you know, terrorists could take like a light bulb of this stuff and be riding on a subway, just open up the window, throw it out, the light bulb will break, and it lets out all these spores that every time a train runs over, it's gonna kick more up. And they said, you could, you could kill millions of people with this stuff. And they would breathe in that spore. Think of it as a seed, I guess, it'd be a better, when you breathe it in, it gets into the lungs, it's nice and warm there, and it kind of wakes up and it, it starts to do its thing, okay? But you'll need to know this endospore inside seed again I this is just a little history that goes in with biology okay and there's kind of what it looks like when it goes and it changes okay and so if you get it on your skin in an open wound that's kind of what it will do that's healing so that person definitely gonna make it you can see it was much bigger but anytime you see a wound that's perfectly round that means it's healing yeah, this poor guy, I apologize for your weak belly. This guy actually held it, and that's his brain. Okay. This poor guy got it in an open wound. His arm swelled up. I'm going to guess maybe about this big. He was about to lose it, so they took a razor blade and split it open so it could drain. And now, I assume he's still alive. <clears throat> And then here's an anthrax that's actually going into the spore stage. So you see it's rod shaped. Okay. That's it. So tomorrow's the last day of bacteria. Any questions on that? Pretty cool. Remember, very rapid. Very, very rapid. <clears throat>